Look into my eyes. You are feeling very sleepy. If my soothing voice is soothing enough, it should be sending you listeners at home to sleep. Are you asleep? Well, wake up, because I, Alan Partridge, am not a hypnotist. But my next guest is. I'm told she's going to hypnotise me. I might end up like one of those zombies from the living dead. Which, of course, my arms won't be dropping off. She, uh, she <laughs> hails from across the Great Lake. Good old uncle, US of stateside. She's as American as chocolate chip biscuits and mum's apple tart. But, uh, that's where comparisons with a tart must end. <laughs> Lest I come to a sticky end. Ladies and gentlemen, she's not a tart. She's a lady hypnotist with a set of pins that'll hypnotise any bloke. The big question is, what's the name of her game? Please welcome Janie Katz. <laughs> Janie Katz, knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Janie Katz, aha. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. No, aha. Uh -huh. You say aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. OK, right. What's the name of your game? Is it a game? Has it got a name other than hypnotism? Really, what I practice is hypnotherapy not hypnosis. Right. So I try to distance myself from the kind of showbiz, um, you know, the razzmatazz side of it. I'm not out to make fools of people. I'm there to use hypnotherapy as a form of uh, helping people to open up their minds. Right, because I saw a brilliant hypnotist, uh, Tony, Le <laughs> Tony Lemesma, he was called. He was brilliant. <laughs> he, he was fantastic. He had, he had blokes crying like babies. He had women on all fours barking like dogs. It was really first-class entertainment. Yeah, it I really know. was. Fantastic. <laughs> He's, uh, but he's very popular. He's booked right through till next summer. Um, unavailable, hence your good self. Um, <laughs> now, but uh, you, you, you were in London uh, promoting your new book. That's right, yes. Well, I, I actually know New York quite well. Oh, you do? Mm, yeah. I popped over there and I, and I really did get into, uh, as, as Billy Joel put it, I really did get into a New York state of mind. <laughs> Um, I bet, yeah. yeah, I mean, I jumped in a cab and I said, Cabby, take me to the core of the Big Apple. I want to check out the pit. <laughs> Dude, I really did. You know, oh, so like, God. Yeah. Just look, next time, just say Manhattan. Well, and you'll I, get there. No, I, no, I want to go to the centre of New York. <laughs> yeah, that is Manhattan. Right, well, that's, that's not where I want to go. <laughs> where do you want to go? Bloomingdale's. Yeah, you're in Manhattan. Right, OK, I'm in Manhattan. What do I do now? You just, you get in the cab and you say to the driver, take me to Manhattan, hmm? to Bloomingdale's. OK, I'm, I'm outside Bloomingdale's. What, what next? What do I do now? What do you mean? You've hypnotised me. No, I haven't. Oh, no. I see, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought, I no, said, you'll I, know, Alan. I thought you just sort of slid into it. No. It's just that you were staring at me. Um, I'm sorry. No, I, I just find you fascinating. What? In, in what way? <laughs> Clinically. Really? <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. You, Janie Katz, hypnotist. I, Alan Partridge, clinically fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> now, you're... Uh, now, I believe right now I'm very fortunate because you're going to hypnotise me. I certainly am, yes. Great. Um, obviously, we don't have much time, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a, a kind of vague gesture towards it. Uh, but the idea is that what we'll try to do is to project onto, let's say, the curtain of your mind, mm -hmm. a series of images from your past. OK, well, I'll draw back my curtains. Good. <laughs> Behind which you will find a neck curtain. <laughs> you may lift that up, should you wish. Thank you. And we'll see if there are any skeletons lurking in the cupboard. The, the, cur <laughs> the curtain cupboard. In your mind. My mind's curtain cupboard, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the first thing to do is to get you relaxed. OK. So if you can just lie on... What do you... Right, just... Just put this peg what? on my nose. Why are you putting a peg on your nose? Well, because I, I was told that the, the, your blood pressure increases during hypnotism and it could lead to a nosebleed. No. No. <laughs> no, it's nonsense. Who told you that? The researchers. 
I think it was probably a joke. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's all right. It's okay. Well, I mean, take it off. Well, because... I'll take it off if I wish to yeah, take it off. You can't relax with a peg on your nose. If I, if I shall be the judge of whether I should take the <laughs> peg off your nose, and as it happens, I have decided to take the peg off. And so <laughs> I'll do that now. <clears throat> okay, just lie back on the couch okay. if you would be so kind. Right, I'm lying back on the couch, listeners. Okay, just try to concentrate. Now, I'm going to count you down from three, and in that time I want you to relax every muscle in your body, okay? And then you will be hypnotised. Three, two, one. Now, Alan, without opening your eyes, I want you to tell me what you can see. A pair of plimsolls. All right. Now, who do they belong to? Little boy. Do you recognize the little boy? Yes, it's Alan Partridge. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, Alan, I want you to just step inside Alan Partridge. Okay. Now, Alan, would you tell me how old you are? I'm eight years old. <laughs> and where are you at the moment? I'm at the bottom of Tandle Hill. Where's Tandle Hill? It's near the school. Okay. Now, um, describe what you can see in front of you. There's about 80 boys. <laughs> so you're not alone? No, they're at the top of the hill. And where are you? I'm at the bottom. Can't keep up with them. It's a cross-country run. Okay. It's cold. It's very cold. Why are you so cold if you're running, Alan? I haven't got any shorts on. <laughs> Why not? Stephen McCombs taking them off me. Can, can you see Stephen McCombs? Yes, he's waving them about with his hand. Is he's saying, smelly Alan Fartridge. <laughs> smelly Alan Fartridge. I'm yeah. not smelly. No, smelly I know Alan that. Smelly Alan Fartridge. Okay, Alan. All right. Now, look, you're not happy, are no. you? No. No. Should we take you away from here? Yes. Let's take you someplace where you are happy. Oh, good. Okay? We're going there right now. Mm. Are you there? Yes. Good. Now yes. tell me what you can see. I'm in class. Yeah? The headmaster's coming. Right, yeah. and what's happening? Oh, he's, he's looking very pleased. He said, he, said, he said someone's won an essay writing competition. Someone's written an essay on sport and it's won a prize. Mm -hmm. What else is he saying? He said... Is there an Alan Partridge in the class? Would Alan Partridge identify himself? And what's happening now? I'm standing up. And they're all applauding me. Terrific. What are you saying, Alan? I'm saying... I'm Alan Partridge. <laughs> I am Alan Partridge. I've won the essay writing competition. Of that, there's no doubt. OK, good. <laughs> I have won it. Things will now be very different. No longer will I be called infantile names because okay. I've won the competition. Great. Now, Alan, we have to... We're running a little short of time. We have to now bring you back, OK? No, I don't want to come back. No, you'll be fine. You, you have to come back because you're in the middle of a, of a talk show. I like it here. Well, you like, like it, you like it here too. No, I don't want to go back. I oh, don't want to be on the radio. Come on, Alan. You're Nobody very popular. Nobody listens to Radio come 4. On. Alan, okay. <laughs> Nobody listens to Radio 4. All right, Alan, just concentrate because I can't bring you I back. I want to be on the telly. Otherwise. So just, Let okay, I'm going to count to three and you have Let to come on back. The telly. One, two, three. So what I want to know is when are you going to hypnotise me? <laughs> I've done it. Really? Yes, it's been done. Just think about what is foremost in your mind at the moment. Oh, the essay writing competition. That's right, back at school. Anything else from school? Do you remember? Yes. Cross country runs. Tandle Hill, you yeah, remember that? Great stuff, yeah. That's Lovely. right, yeah. yeah. You enjoyed Jay that? Ellen Fartridge. What? No, no one calls now, me that. On, no one Simon. calls me that. No. I was just referring him this back is, to his past. Simon, this is a very important point. You no. must not abuse this privilege I, because we have been privileged to see smell. inside Alan's memory. Look, no, this wanna, is irrelevant, well, Alan. You don't have to defend no, yourself. No, I want to clear this up once and for all. This has, no been, this has been hanging in the air okay. for about 30 okay. years, right? <laughs> I want to clear it up, OK? That Stephen McComb called me smelly Alan Partridge because he thought it was funny, Fartridge, I mean, Partridge, he said smelly. I wasn't, my personal hygiene was never in question. I showered regularly, I was never, I didn't smell. The question is, what's Stephen McComb doing now? That's the question, because I host a chat show. What's he doing? I'll tell you what, he's a forklift truck driver with British Leyland. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he lives in Edgebaston. He's got a pathetic life. 
I've seen, I've parked my car outside his house. I've watched him come and go. There. <laughs> he's, and he's got a sad, pathetic life. And McCoom, if you're listening, what are you now? You're nothing. And I am Alan Partridge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, now, you, uh, that sort of about wraps it up. Now, your book's available in the, in the shops this Christmas. It's not a very good advert for my book. I assure you, it does not make you this aggressive. OK, well... Um, yeah, it's called The Future is Behind You, and it is, in, in fact, a therapeutic study. OK, one...